What's up everyone, it's Speed here, and in today's video, I want to talk about how Ramses makes the offlane efficient. I want to talk about why offlane players just fall behind and don't really have any scaling in the majority of games that I watch. Guys, you have to understand that this role is just another side laner, right? And, and obviously the safe lane and offlane have their key differences, right? There's a lot of reasons why offlane players are offlane players. They probably like brawling. They like, you know, ganking the enemy team. But a lot of the same traits that you'll see from a safe laner have to be implemented on the offlane. Otherwise, you will not get to high MMR. And that's what we're going to be showing in today's video. The offlane is no place for the weak. And this is why at GameLeap.com, we have hundreds hundreds of pro guides covering the most powerful offlane heroes so you can start carrying your games from Dota's most notoriously tough lane. To master the tricks of the pros, check out the discount link in the description of this video and start dominating your games from the offlane role immediately. So Ramsey's had a pretty bad start to this game and I want to talk about how he manages to stabilize out his game and not just continue to potentially feed. The first thing he does is after a death around the 920 minute mark, he immediately walks back to lane. Why is this crucial and why is it something you should be doing as a space creator? As he's obviously looking for, for a stampede potential, good heads up. But the reason he should be walking back to lane is to keep your TP open. TP is the single most important asset for space creators in Dota. It allows you to split up the map, show up to ganks, really just do everything you need to do, you know, show up to a smoke, whatever it is. But really what I want people to understand is even though you're a quote unquote ganker, right, he's playing centaur, he still needs to farm. Right, and this applies for Axe, it applies for Underlord, I, what you name the hero, Night Stalker, doesn't matter. All these heroes are like this. So really all he's doing at this point is just trying to amp up his net worth. He's getting harassed quite a bit by the gyrocopter, but this is going to be the trend for a while now. And it's really what I need to stress because no, guys, I I've watched a ton of offlane performances all the way up from, you know, Herald to Divine. And the majority of players just lack the ability to slow down their own game as an offlane player and actually just amp their own net worth. Look, he's taking a side camp after pushing in the lane. Can you believe this? Right? Incredible. And then his first gank of the game was on a gyrocopter trying to TP out in the trees. Right? This is his effective play, which then transitions into a tower. You do not always have to just run around and get kill after kill to be the high impact offlaner. In fact, that is the biggest way to grief your team 9 times out of 10 because you're going to prevent everyone from farming. And now here we're going to see the TP come into play, right? This is his first like actual movement of the game. Obviously he's coordinating with his space creating Kunkka. And this is a massive point that people actually need to understand that I'm trying to push with a lot of players nowadays. When you are doing anything on any sort of tempo controller, identify on your team who you make space with who you get kills with, because Centaur does not solo kill people. In fact, the Kunkka barely can solo kill people at this point. However, combine the two and you kill anyone. Same thing with Skyrath Mage, combine him with Kunkka or Centaur, and all of a sudden, you can kill anyone, and that's exactly what we see here, right? They go in, uh, good fear from the Lich to try to protect the Invoker, but it was not enough, and he gets the kill. Why does that happen? It's actually really, really simple, and you need to do this in your pubs. Coordinate with the person you work well with. It actually blows my mind that no one does this. It's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. And if you're asking the question to yourself right now, how do I know who I coordinated with? Like, I have no idea what that even means. Really, you just need to pick any two heroes for the most part. Like, as a, as a rule of thumb, if you don't know what to do or who you should be ganking with, just pick one other hero that you think does a little bit of damage that will complement you. Like, it doesn't matter. Right? You could pick any pair. Even if it's Chen Kunkka, that's fine, right? Even if it was Centaur Chen, it's probably good enough, right? Just the extra amount of damage that Chen would provide could be enough to at least secure a kill on someone like a Lich or a Lina, especially if it's in a pub. All right, coming up here is another favorite sequence of mine. Um, I'm just going to rewind a little bit just to show what he's doing. For the last few minutes, he's just been bouncing between the lanes, and this is what he's going to do. His team is not necessarily ahead, and I want to explain something very important to you guys. Pushing a tower and fighting under the enemy team's tower is the worst place to fight in Dota if you just walk right up to it. It's very easy for them to set up. They're going to have tower armor. They can TP anywhere. They have vision of you. It just is all the you know characteristics of a bad fight in Dota. And you notice um, even IG is setting up for it as they sort of go in the center here they're not going on him they're sort of just like trying to defend the mid push and just Ramsey's being here is actually creating space. I want you guys to understand how meta this is to some extent. They understand that Centaur is a hero that likes to take mid tower. Now, if you didn't get that in the first place, well, you should know that now. Centaur is a hero that likes to walk up to the mid tower, tank it, and potentially use his retaliate stacks to take it. In fact, if you're playing Centaur in a pub, you should do this, right? You should actually try to go for the mid tower. It creates a lot of space. Don't overcommit, but, you know, like at least try to force rotations. Um, and that's what they're doing here, right? He's sort of just sticking around the area to see rotating heroes and being like, oh, can I push to the mid tower or not? 
to Hero Smith? Okay, I'm not gonna go for it. It's that simple. And this is actually creating a lot of space. He's not just running around and, and being all YOLO and such, as they make a really nice recall gank. Uh, Chen's broken. But once again, look, downtime, I want to show what he does. Do you guys think a lot of offlane players do this? He didn't want to show on the map right now, right? He's like, okay, I want to go for mid tower. I want to potentially, you know, threaten my presence on the map. So what does he do? He just kills two jungle camps. I'm not saying you should jungle all game. I'm just saying if you don't know what you should do and you're just walking around as any sort of hero that can kill a camp, Kunkka. I, I, like, I'll go back over the examples if it really helps. Mars, Kunkka, I, like, I can go through all of them. Doom, Bristle, Brew, Abaddon, Axe. Omni, it does not matter if you have nothing to do and you are unsure of what play to make, at least kill a camp because then after he kills the camp, he walks back to the lane, kills the wave, and all of a sudden he's close to a pipe. Coming out of an 0-2 lane, he's going to get around a, a, what, a, like a 16 minute pipe, which is pretty solid. It's pretty, pretty solid. And once again, same thing here. Look, guys, it's just... It's just effective movements that have actual, like, clean impact. You want to get the bounty rune? Okay, go secure the bounty rune. What does he do after getting the bounty rune? Wh what lane does he push in, guys? Because y you hear all these pros stressing pushing lanes. Yes, that's key. It's actually very important in Dota. It's probably the most important thing. What lane does he push in here? Definitely not top. They can easily TP in and kill him with axe. Mid is not clearly an option bottom's not an option but that's because this is a pro match in a pub you should be looking for open lanes however because there's no option he kills a jungle camp shocking sometimes you have to do this this is the time to jungle when all the lanes are pushing and it's not safe does this happen a lot in lower or pubs no not really it really doesn't but look he's pushing in lanes guys a little bit of dangerous farm right that's it that's it i'm trying to get this through people's head they think like Farming means that you're doing nothing or like you can never farm as an offlaner. It's the most destructive idea that is so commonly prevalent other than like pushing towers every time you win a fight. Like th those two ideas are just like the most destructive. And finally here after all is said and done and after all he of his farming is done, bottom lane is being pushed in, top lane is being pushed in, the mid tower pressure has finally been relieved and what do you know, he finally gets the mid tower. Has he set up multiple ganks this game? Has he made infinite space no no because it's very hard to do that in a pro match and i understand pro matches are different than pubs yes but how does this apply to pubs i'll answer that question really quickly well how does it apply to pubs it's actually very simple you can take the mid tower much much easier first off so it should be a priority of yours if you're centaur but just moving on from that fact if you're just an offlane player right as an offlane player in in your games and pubs you can make a lot more smoke ganks because people are a lot more spread out and showing on the map more and not as secretive about their movements so if you're the guy who coordinates smoke gangs all of a sudden you become the best player in the lobby and this is really the main thing people wonder how all these offlane players manage to get like really good timings even coming out of bad lanes it's super super simple you just have to create space by pushing in lanes and threatening things like towers or forcing tps right For Forcing TPs is basically just as good as killing someone in many different situations. And all of a sudden, 20 minute blink, 20 minute pipe, and EG can start snowballing. Now we're going to talk about smokes in a moment, uh, because that is just as important. And let's get into it. So this I just want to put in as a main idea of Dota. This is huge. I really love what EG does here. They smoke on the high ground. They're like, okay, they scan it out. They're like, I we want to go in here. So we scan it. They go up the high ground to make sure it's not too dangerous because they want to burst someone, right? They have their key heroes here, right? The Skyrath plus the Zentar, so they can burst people if needed. However, they see a smoke come out. They're like, eh, all right, there's too many heroes here. He blinks in, stomps, but the gyro gets off the BKB, right? They see the BKB force and they're like, boys, we're out. This is the best thing you can do in Dota. Forcing a fight in a dangerous area, right? Where they're probably going to have a ward, right? There's a high chance they can ward this hill now. I don't know if they do or not, but usually you'll see that happen. Uh, if they actually committed to the fight, realistically, Lich would put up a ward. He's not doing it because they're running away, but he could get a, a ward that would scout the entire fight, and they would also be running into them, which means Axe would get a, a fantastic call. Invoker would land all the spells because it's in an enclosed area. I mean, look at this meteor. It's just going to roll all through this. It would shred them. So really, they back out because their gank did not work. Please, guys, start doing this. It's like, if you're fighting into enemy territory and things don't go well, just get out. Like, just get out. Just reset. I know it can be hard to do in pubs. You just got to communicate to your team, like, hey, guys, if this gank doesn't work i mean first off smoke ganks just work brilliantly in pubs so that probably won't even happen but like if it does happen where you're in an enclosed area and your smoke fails just you've really got to get out and then finally they actually smoke again right afterwards like legitimately 30 seconds afterwards uh to catch the enemy team off guard and it sort of works i uh, really what this ended up doing to the to the large extent was allow them to transition into a mid tower and this is very difficult to do in in pubs but it's the reason why you have to push out lanes um it allows them to, you know, sort of threaten this mid tower if they needed to. 
Yeah, that's kind of exactly what happens, right? They get a kill onto the Invoker, and now all of a sudden, the fight transitions really well. Uh, and why does this happen? And why is this clean Dota? Well, it starts with the li Lich pickoff, right? It, it really does. It starts with the Lich pickoff, so they have a legitimate advantage. And then looking at the overall state of the fight, we see a situation here where... Uh, they can actually jump people they want to because IG took a fight outside of the base, right? I mean, I don't even know what just happened there. But IG took a fight outside of the base, right? Which allows EG to actually win, you know, a fight because that, that's kind of what you need. I mean, that was an insane bow torrent. I mean, that was like the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, actually. Good lord, I, I didn't even notice that till now. He just exits this axe, but sees the TB coming in from Invoker. Was that blind? I don't know if that was blind or he's just like the best player this world's ever seen. I think he was blind. That's actually insane. If he didn't have vision of him there, I'm actually just... Maybe you can see that TP? I don't know. But that's just nuts, actually. Because that's like the main reason why they win that fight. Because now the Centaur gets a free blink onto the Invoker. Which I'm a bit surprised didn't get cancelled, but... Just huge, really. This is how you make things happen. Especially in your pubs, you're like, Speed, this is a pro match, it doesn't work in my pubs. <laughs> no, guys, like, push into lanes and call smokes to run at the push lanes. Like, if you want a simple way to actually make things happen, there you go. Push your lane and tell them to smoke to the lane you just pushed in. I'm gonna end the video there because that is really good advice that you should take into your, you know, pubs. And really rewatch this video because I gave a lot of, like, important ideas that people just don't think about. Uh, that I think everyone needs to start thinking about, so... Best of luck. I think you guys are going to all crush your pubs if you can start doing these things and GG. The offlane is no place for the weak. And this is why at GameLeap.com we have hundreds of pro guides covering the most powerful offlane heroes so you can start carrying your games from Dota's most notoriously tough lane. To master the tricks of the pros, click on this link right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount and unlock your unfair advantage.